number 56. That one happened right in the middle of the field and they collected at least eight to ten trucks involved in it. Again, there's going to be about seven or eight sitting down on the apron of the racetrack. The flames that erupted there for a moment on a couple of the trucks now have been extinguished or have appeared to go out. Safety crews are on the scene immediately as they all line up on the apron of the fire for you as quick as we can. Alan, let's go down to pit road. Jim Phillips is down at that end of the uh, pit road. Jim, can you see anything, any numbers on any of those trucks down there? It looks like it was another 15 truck, to me, but he got uh, up in the air there and tipped it down through here. Alan, from here is John Young's truck, also to the feet of Ryan Rush. You had mentioned that one or not, but uh, my uh, view from this point is uh, pretty much a part of the road course. When the engine do an exit from the infield on the road course, Jimmy and Corey's number 26 now being returned to the garage area with substantial front end damage. Our Winston Cup pit stop. And here from the sports top drivers. It's open daily from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tickets are daily priced at $12 for adults, $10 for seniors, and $6 for children, ages 6 through 12. That's the Tony USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction, located just outside of the grandstand here at the World Center of Race. All the drivers, Lance Norick involved, John Young involved, Jimmy Kitchens involved, and then Amy involved, B.A. Wilson involved, Ryan McGlynn, Robbie Rush. And uh, the other truck that I saw, Alan, right in the middle of that, that was bouncing off the, right there when they got three wide, would have been Rob Morgan's machine, and he is involved in it also. Yeah, his was one of the ones that was involved when the uh, the contact first started, when they were three deep here in the tri-oval, and his has been hooked up to a record and towed back to the garage. And there is one other machine that's been involved in this incident that is all the way down inside turn one. The driver's gotten out of it. Uh, and I can't quite eyeball at this angle uh, which truck that is. So we'll get a number on that as soon as we possibly can and pass it along. But at least nine machines involved. And again, our attention focused on the machine of Jeffrey Morai, which took a, a very severe battery in the accident. The safety workers are working around his truck now. And uh, we will get, obviously, any update that we can along to you as soon as we can. But so far, the work uh, continues on the speedway. And a couple of our pit reporters have gone over to the care center. And as soon as they're able to talk with any of the drivers, as soon as they're released over there, we'll uh, get an update as to maybe what triggered all this or what got started here at the start-finish line. 56 laps were complete out of the 100 that would have made up the event here this afternoon, the NASCAR Craftman Truck Series 250. So this is going to keep narrow the field down considerably in a race that had been a really exciting up to this point. I kind of hate to, what he definitely hates. A lot of damage to the machine as uh, he went tumbling from the trial down the race area. Wow. Flat 56, under the red flag here. Let's recap for you those involved in the crash. That is because the catch fencing was delayed. It looked like the back end of Bodine's machine when it went spinning up through the trial fencing apart. Uh, the cabling and so on did its job, kept uh, the machine out of the grandstands, which is what it's supposed to be there to do, kick it back onto the racetrack, but those supports that are designed to give way when a vehicle impacts them uh, do need to be repaired. I've done a super job, and, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of standing in the back here trying to, you know, stay out of the way and, uh, you know, looking at some of this devastation, ending on the back of the record going down. I have to go rent this crash. I'm having someone like that to kill. That's Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer is talking about the, the competition level here at Daytona. There was all kinds of, uh, everybody saying this would be a great show for the trucks here running the engines with no restrictor plate on and Alan's playing through there. There's not even a back on it. It's so big and boxy. They push so much air. The speeds are going to automatically stay down. But it has been a terrific race up to this point. We've had 21 lead changes among 11 different drivers uh, so far on the race. Five caution flags, now the red flag, that has uh, stopped the event. And uh, different drivers have led throughout the event. More fun stuff. Would it have made a difference? Well, it, the restrictor plate's going to slow, slow straightaway speed down. <laughs> uh, the problem is the handling of the trucks and the downforce on the trucks. Um, you know, the restrictor plate doesn't have anything to do with that. So it wouldn't have made that much difference. It probably wouldn't have made a whole lot of difference. Did you actually see the, the crash? Talk? I saw the aftermath on the replay, yeah. Pretty gruesome? It's a pretty violent crash, uh, probably the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. You okay? Yeah. All right. Get a couple words. You're good. I'm sure you've seen
Bruce, have you spoken with your brother? What's he saying? Well, we haven't spoken with him yet. Uh, Bruce Kennedy came out and told us what was going on. They were still examining him uh, when we were over there, but uh, uh, the main thing is the head injury, and he's perfectly normal. Uh, no head injury at all but to this point. They're still examining him, still seeing what's going on. But he was alert, uh, talking, conscious. Uh, uh, the biggest things right now, I think, uh, is this going to take some time to heal. Uh, he's got some broken bones. And, and, uh, that's that's the good news. It's only bones, and uh, we can heal from that. The question is, how are you holding? Oh, I'm all right. Uh, it's pretty tough to see that. Uh, you know, it's tough to see any race car driver go through that as a race car driver, and then to have it to be your brother and have to watch that. It's pretty tough. Uh, you know, I got a happy hour coming up. And I got to go out and run around there, and uh, you, know, you just got to. We got a job to do. You got to put it out of your mind. Did Brett go down to the pit? I mean, before the race, he told me, hey, I got to run. I got, I'm going down there. Did, were you guys in the pit or where? No, we were, me and Brett were on top of the motorhome when it went out. So uh, you know, we we knew they were taking him right to Halifax, so we just hopped in the car and went over. So, you, did, I mean, did you know it was Jeff? I mean, the truck was so obliterated. Yeah, on well, I, I didn't at first. Uh, I had to wait, and they had, as soon as they said it on TV, you know, then I knew what was going on. Uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't tell what it was when it was sitting there. When, when you saw the wreck and now that you see that, thankfully, it's only broken bones, your thoughts on how anybody would get through that? Well, I tell you, you know, he's been on such a good workout regimen the last year and a half, two years, that uh, he is in fantastic shape. His body is in great shape. That is probably the single biggest reason he came out of this, you know, as little hurt as he is. Uh, you know, the better shape you're in, the better your body's going to take a, a punishment like that. Uh, thankfully, we, we've got great helmets now, and, and, and the head restraints and things that we do in these cars and trucks, uh, they all did their job. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, everything can, can come out normal. Is it miraculous to come out of this like It's pretty incredible. Uh, you know, to see a, a violent wreck like that, Away, but you know he was talking shortly after, and that's pretty much a miracle. Were you able to talk to the cops? No, they uh, they were still in there working on him. Uh, we didn't get to talk to him. Uh, Bruce Kennedy came out and told us the, the prognosis, what was going on. And, and, uh, the main thing is, is, is his head's all right. You know, and it's going to be back to normal. When we left, they were still looking at him. The speedway will, will have you know the final determination with neurological.